I'm gonna head outside. I'm gonna turn my grill on because I'm making shrimp scampi kebabs. I finally chopped some tarragon and some parsley. I'm making a marinade for my shrimp kebabs. It's almost like the flavor in the chimichurri. Got some white wine vinegar, some oil, a little Dijon. I'm adding a little bit of mustard in there and honey to kind of cut some of the acidity. And I'm mincing up five cloves of garlic. To the bowl, I'm gonna add about a half a cup of canola oil. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. Whole grain mustard, give it a little kick. I'd say about two teaspoons. A little Dijon, I'm gonna add some honey to it. So the cross between tangy and sweet. I'm gonna add my garlic, that parsley, and the tarragon. Tarragon smells like licorice and it definitely tastes like licorice. And tarragon and Dijon mustard, match made in heaven. I'm gonna do the juice of one lemon. I have a half a pound of shrimp that I have deveined and I left the tail on. I like leaving the tail on not only for a little bit of presentation on the skewer, but it also helps to keep the shrimp intact on the skewer. Give it a toss. All right, so I'm gonna let this set up in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So I've got my shrimp, remember? Yeah, it's been marinating in the fridge. So I'm gonna make my shrimp scampi kebabs. All right, so I've got two lemons here. I'm gonna cut them into half moon and wanna use it on my skewer. Shrimp and lemon go together hand in hand. I wanna chop up some parsley for garnish. Just give it a rough chop. So I've got my skewers here. I'm gonna go lemon first. Fold it in half, thread it through like that. Then shrimp, lemon peel and shrimp. I'm just gonna continue to do that until I get to the top. Everything looks great. I'm gonna head outside now and get these babies on the grill. grill is nice and hot. You know, shrimp doesn't take long to cook. I've already sprayed it down with some non-stick so it's not gonna stick. I'm gonna let my shrimp cook for about two to three minutes on both sides until I get those pretty char marks. The grill's gonna give it a little smoky flavor. It's gonna provide some of that char that I love on shrimp. That's what I wanted, a nice char on that side. Mm, goodness gracious, that smells incredible. That's charred on the other side. I'm just gonna plate it. Mm -hmm. I got some of my marinade. Just pour it on top. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gents, ratatouille, low country style. Ratatouille is a traditional French vegetable stew. And there's different variations of this dish, and I'm making my own variation of it with okra and shrimp. So in the skillet here, I added one onion, a green bell pepper that I diced, garlic, zucchini, yellow squash, and one small eggplant. All right, now I'm gonna add a pint of cherry tomatoes, a few sprigs of thyme, as well as a bay leaf. I'm gonna basically cook it until the cherry tomatoes start to blister. Now for my low country twist. I'm gonna add my okra. Okra doesn't take long to cook. Had I add the okra in the same time as the eggplant, it would just get really, really mushy. Now I'm gonna add in my shrimp that I have cleaned and deveined. And I'm just cooking the shrimp until it turns pink. All right, the juice of a lemon helps cut the slickness from the okra. Make sure you don't get any seeds in there. That's why I like to do it this way. Ladies and gents, ratatouille, low country style. Turn that off, bring this over here. Oh, as if this isn't already great on its own. I wanna add basil, mm-hmm. Vita and Jade will be here soon and we can celebrate 
this beautiful journey they're embarking on. I mean, oh. All right, let me go get some tissues because this is gonna be emotional. Lord. I'm making fried shrimp with my mom's famous french fries, but I'm gonna make the seasoning for my fried shrimp. I call this my Gullah seasoning. I'm using a lot of paprika, almost four tablespoons of that for the color smokiness, two teaspoons of oregano, two teaspoons onion powder, a little bit of cayenne, not too spicy, two teaspoons garlic powder. You know what? I love garlic powder. Another little teaspoon. White pepper, thyme, and this gullah seasoning will go great on poultry. I'm adding some basil. You can also use it on your vegetables. It's universal, and that's exactly why I made it. Gullah is a, a term used to describe the African-American people here in the Low Country. We're a distinct group of African-Americans, and our food definitely speaks to our West African ancestry. And I add a little bit of sugar just to balance out some of that cayenne that I use. A few pinches of salt, a few cracks of pepper. All right, that's done. I'm gonna get started on my dredge. Got a bowl for my wet, got a bowl for my dry. I'm just gonna start with two cups of flour in my dry, my gullah seasoning. I'm just gonna use all of the buttermilk. When you dredge, keep one hand clean, keep one hand messy. Drop it in the buttermilk, drop it in the dredge. I can't wait till mom gets here. She's the reason why I cook. Before I get started, I want to check the temp on my oil. You want to make sure that it's at a temperature between 360 and 375. Be mindful to go one at a time because if you drop it all in at one time, they're going to clump together, okay? Woo! Music to my ears. Don't overcrowd your pot. Otherwise, it will boil over. Move it around. Make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. And I'm looking for that golden brown color. Not too dark, not too light. That's it. That's the color I'm looking for. That's the firmness I'm looking for. That's ready to come out. And do this fast. Don't hurt yourself, but work quickly. You want a nice, even color. First batch is done. Mm, 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 mm. Mommy! Just hey, in girl. time? Ooh, let me make some fries to go with some shrimps. What you think? Remember, growing up, you would make the steak fries, I'm, I'm here to assist you in my kitchen. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. we, got, we got my seasoning. My mom has washed two russet potatoes, cut it up. She's adding the russet potatoes to the bowl with a little bit of that gullah seasoning. And she's now adding flour to begin tossing. So the flour is going to give it that nice coating and that crunch we want at the end. Okay. Okay, you know what? I really, truly need a bag. This work? Yes, that'll work. My mom always used the bag. Okay, mm -hmm. is the oil ready? The oil's nice and hot. All right, so I'm just gonna drop them in there and just let them stay in there for about 10 minutes yes. and we should be good to go. All right, Ma, these look good to you? Yeah, yeah, you can tell because they're like kind of brownish there. They're mm -hmm. good, they're good. They are beautiful. You know what's good? What? Just sprinkle a little bit more in this while it's hot on the fries. Okay, Ma, with the tidbits, Pat's facts for the day. There you are. I like it. Shrimp and grits is a staple item in the low country, especially at brunch. You eat at brunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever. We eat shrimp and grits all day long. While my bacon is frying, I'm gonna get started on my grits. I'm using old fashioned grits, two cups, Old-fashioned grits are less processed than quick grits, so it takes a little longer to cook. These are the grits that my grandmother grew up on. She still uses old-fashioned grits. I like quick grits, I mean, of course, because if you're in a rush, quick grits can cook within like five minutes, but old-fashioned grits take about 20 minutes to cook. And the reason I whisk the grits as I pour it in, because grits lump up very quickly. If you serve a lumpy grit to anybody in the South, your name will be the talk of the town. Once it starts to boil, you'll bring it down to a simmer. And if you don't salt your water now, you'll have some really bland grits at the end. Well, you see me over here getting started on this shrimp and grits. Yes, I need your help. Good. OK. OK, just wash you your hands. Help. You got my help. You smell all the way down the street, right? I know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
can you help me with of the, course the onions? I can. Teamwork makes the dream work. I know that's right. It smells so good in here, Cartier. This girl is making my favorite. You know, I was thinking, where do shrimp and grits come from? Definitely Charleston, but you know, everybody makes shrimp and grits so different, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. we all just added our own flavor. You have to have fresh shrimp. How can you eat shrimp and grits without Charleston right. shrimp? Girl, I don't care if you got to go out in the creek all day long. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you need fresh shrimp mm -hmm. with shrimp and gravy. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think people actually want to take the quick way out. Mm -hmm. But because I love cooking, I like to take the great way out. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Yes, the yes. Slow way is the great way. I think we got okay. enough <laughs> onions before I start boohooing in here, oh, girl. Oh, OK. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's enough. Yes. This pan is nice and brown, so that's going to give me a good dark gravy. You put that in there? Yes, I'll go ahead and add that in for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's going to make a really good gravy mm -hmm. right there. That's actually the biggest key to making it as well. You got to get, that, that, get that, that pan yeah. nice and mm -hmm. dirty. Yes. And I need a little bit of flour. Can you stir around the grits for me, too? I sure can. Thank you. Cardi, what kind of grits do you use? I'm using old-fashioned grits today. Oh, really? Using old-fashioned grits, it just holds up a lot better. You know, it's yeah. nice and thick. If the grits is thicker, then I won't need extras. You know, no, you're right, I, won't, right. I won't need a second help. Right. You know? It'll stick to your bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a girl says. I say. used to tell my children, honey, it's going to stick to your gizzard. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. This is coming along really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks good over there, Cardi. Yeah, it's coming together. OK, look it's... at you. See, I, I learned a thing or two. Y'all taught me well. You did, I'm okay. telling you. It looks really good. <laughs> Just gonna cook this down till the onions get a little translucent. Mm -hmm. And while I do that, can you put a little flour in the shrimp and some salt, pepper, and garlic powder? We like to add flour to our shrimp just to get it a little crispy. I love brunch. I eat brunch every single day. Mm -hmm. And you make a good mm -hmm. hefty brunch. Yes, I do. You do? Mm -hmm. You have some left over for dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes the oil will cook out of the onions in the skillet. It's OK to add a little bit more. I'm using canola oil. I'm going to brown the shrimp. And that's where you get the distinguished color of gullah shrimp. Did you remember to freeze the ice cubes, the, the coffee the, ice cubes? Uh -huh. Yeah. What, what are we doing with that? Well, don't worry about that. I okay. just want to make sure that you did it. OK, I did it. Start with the grits when you know. I do. sure can. You know, we can't have yeah. any lumps yeah, in that grits. that's right. Add some uh -huh. water to this pot now. That's when the gravy begins. Uh-huh. I love the sound mm -hmm. of sizzle. Mm-hmm. With gullah food and low country mm -hmm. food, we like to build layers of flavor. Yes. So, you know, a lot of our food, it's a, it's a process. You mm -hmm. want to take your time on something mm -hmm. like this, you mm -hmm. know? I've always just known how to make shrimp and grits gullah style. But what do you think makes it gullah? The brown gravy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Try that. <laughs> mm, girl. Make sure that that brown gravy is right. Mm -hmm. I love the onion flavor, the garlic in there. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to really set it off is when you add the bacon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Take the same bacon that I used to get that bacon grease in the beginning. All those flavors, the bacon, the shrimp, mm -hmm. the gravy. Mm -hmm. It's going to really boost that taste. Mm -hmm. Everything's Ooh, ready. Oh, that looks so good. I'm ready to eat. Can you cut up some green onions for I me? I sure can. I came hungry. OK. Like, very hungry. I'll give you a good serving. Please do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look how thick and creamy slides right off the spoon. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That plate is too cute. <laughs> you did good, girlfriend. <laughs> you hungry? Do you really have to ask that? Let's go. Let's go eat. <laughs> Can't wait to try this. Mmm. 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 Party, hey. It's nice and creamy. The seasoning is just perfect. You get Love it. it. I'm making a grilled shrimp macaroni salad. Sweet Carolina shrimp and American macaroni salad. It is amazing. So I got a pound of local shrimp that I just put a little bit of olive oil on there. I got some cracked black pepper, kosher salt. Squeeze half a lemon on top. Lemon juice just really brightens up seafood, especially shrimp. 
My grill is very, very hot. These shrimp are gonna cook in no time. I'm just gonna pour this right on top of my, ooh. Music to my ears. Spread it out, make sure they cook nice and evenly. Ain't nothing like Charleston shrimp, I tell you that. When the shrimp get nice and pink and a nice little char on it, you know it's time to flip it. Mmm. This salad is gonna be loaded with shrimp. <laughs> nice and crispy and super sweet. Ooh, look at that. These shrimp are perfection. I'm gonna let it cool down and get started on the dressing for my macaroni salad. It's a simple Dijonese, about a half a cup of mayo, a squirt of Dijon mustard. That Dijon mustard is gonna give it a little tang. Quarter cup of sweet relish. The sweet relish is gonna help mellow out the tanginess from the Dijon and the red wine vinegar. I'd say about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Put that to the side. A half an onion. Shrimp season is not year round in Charleston, but what my grandmother likes to do and what I like to do now too, is get the shrimp in shrimp season and put pounds of it in the freezer. So when we want shrimp when it's out of season, we just go to the freezer, thaw it out, and it tastes just as fresh. Half of a green bell pepper. This is Charleston's Trinity. Onion, bell pepper, celery. And I got some celery back there that I'm gonna cut up as well. Do the same thing with this celery stalk. Shrimp is a staple ingredient in low country cooking, especially gullah cooking, because it's plentiful. I come from a long line of avid fishermen and shrimpers. My grandfather made handmade nets right under the oak tree in his backyard. People would come by and they would pay for it and he, he made a living doing that. So that's why I love shrimp. <laughs> I have a 16 ounce box of elbow macaroni cooked al dente. The dressing just adheres to this pasta really, really well. Add my shrimp now. Now we're talking. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. For this particular dish, I like to use garlic salt. It has garlic and salt, of course, and a little bit of dried parsley. Last but not least, I'm just gonna add some fresh parsley on top, brighten it up a little bit, and some paprika. My mom loves to serve her salads like that and kind of picked up that habit too. I'm gonna let this refrigerate for about an hour. If you want to do it overnight, you can, but an hour is all I need. 